This is Nick. I'm making this video on tools for my Alpha Electric channel. The first thing I'd like to show you is this tote bag. This is an excellent tote. Husky makes it, but you can get it in several different brands. The open top allows you to access your tools very easily and to provide really good organization. So I totally recommend this one. The next thing to show you is this Volcon Tester. Ideal makes this one. This is completely physical. It doesn't rely on chipsets or electronics boards. It's just a solenoid, which is a magnetic coil that pulls down the indicator to show how strong the magnetic field is and therefore what voltage it's detecting. This is a multimeter and amp probe setup, which is excellent. It's probably my most borrowed tool. Next is gloves. If you have nothing else, you should get a set of gloves. They keep your hands pretty clean and keep most of the cuts from getting on your fingers. Being an electrician is a very dirty business. This little doohickey is a plug-in receptacle tester. It allows you to tell if the receptacle is good or not. Based off of the lights, the indicators will show if the receptacle is properly wired, has an open neutral, an open ground, etc. The red button allows you to test a GFI. Electrical tape's a must. This is my favorite brand of tape measure. I don't recommend getting over 25 feet as a tape measure because they tend to break. The automatic rewinding tape measures go pretty well for about 25 feet, but then their master spring breaks after around there. If you take a look here, you'll notice I have the organization set up so that all those items I just showed you fit into the center compartment. And I keep them there so that I can make sure I don't lose them and check at the end of the work period that everything's back in the tote where it's supposed to be so that I don't have missing items. A lot of these tools are very expensive and replacing them isn't cheap. This next thing is a reamer. It allows you to clean up the edges of EMT that you've just cut. It's very essential if you're going to be working with EMT. We have a Phillips screwdriver. We have a common screwdriver. We have a couple of stubbies. Most people won't carry stubbies, so if you have them and they need them, that makes you their best friend for the day. Oftentimes when bringing power to an air conditioning unit or other confined spaces, a stubby comes in handy because the full length of a normal screwdriver doesn't actually fit into the space. A couple of tiny screwdrivers are good for a multitude of reasons. You'll have a lot of equipment that has very small adjustment screws or very small clamps that you have to manipulate in order to get the wires to be secure. All right, here are some drivers that you'll be using all the time. These are hex head drivers. The three in the middle, you're most likely to use those. They are 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, and 7 sixteenths all day. You'll probably be using those three. The half inch on the end and the quarter inch on the other end are used less, but when you need them, they really come in handy. Here's all of the drivers and the tote, so you can see that they all go actually in the same spot in the tote so that I can verify by a quick count that I haven't misplaced one, which routinely happens, and I have to go and find it. Take a look very closely at the common screwdriver. Here's a metal post that if you put a solid wire in there, number 12 or 14, you can just twist the handle of the driver and it puts a nice loop in the end of the wire that you can use to put around a screw. So that's valuable. I recommend getting a driver if you can that has that metal post. Here we have a non-contact voltage sensor. This one is made by Milwaukee. This is an excellent tool. This hasn't always been available. I credit this tool with not being shocked very much while I've been working. Uh, I think I've been shocked maybe once, and that was off of a circuit which was coming through a neutral. So it was very unexpected. It actually didn't have any voltage on it when I started working on the outlet. And then when I unhooked the neutral, it ended up having voltage on it. So in a later video, I might explain how open neutrals can cause that sort of a situation. But if you already know, then you are following how I'm talking about this. Use this all the time. Don't ask people if something's on or off. Just test it. It just takes you a second. You should keep it on you all the time when you're working. An ugly's reference is a key reference. 
It's not very user friendly, but it does give you all the essential data that you need to know that you can't possibly be expected to remember off the top of your head about conduit sizes and how much wire you can fit into them, how much space cubic inches are inside different size boxes. You don't need this information all the time, but when you do need it, it's helpful to have it to hand. Here are the Ugly Brothers. They look similar, but they're actually different. The first one is a BX Cutters or a MC Cutters. You can see that it has a scissor action and the end is rounded off so that it doesn't cut wire inside the metal clad cable when you're taking the metal sheathing off. The dikes are one of the most essential tools that any electrician can have. Stanley makes this excellent knife which has a great handle and uh, a lot of leverage. It does have a little bit of a problem with the knife blade pulling out if it's going through a very goopy, sticky substance. If you're pulling back through, let's say, tar, it can grab the blade and kind of forcibly pull it out of the mechanism. But because your fingers are all protected by the metal of the knife, you don't end up getting cut. It's just a bit of trouble getting it back in. And usually I end up just throwing the blade out because it'll be filthy anyway. If you look here, the handle opens up and it holds five blades in it. It's got just a one button push to get that handle opened up, which is great. There should be some black Sharpies here and also a pencil, but since they've been stolen repeatedly, they're not there right now, so I have to replace them. This is not actually a very good stud sensor, but it does do the job. It only cost me about 13 bucks, and Zircon does make a good stud sensor, but it cost about $80 and it's got a digital readout on it. It's really great, but it's just a bit too pricey for me right now. This one does do the job most of the time. These are my channel locks. I should have a bigger pair of channel locks, but these two pretty much handle 95% of any jobs that I need channel locks for. The Milwaukee on the bottom are nice because they have a fast ratchet so that I just push a button I can change the depth of them and also they have on the front edge and on the back reamers that can be used to ream out half inch EMT so they have that they're, they're not actually as useful as they look they're not as good as having just a a reamer driver like I showed you earlier but it's nice to have an extra set if you're going to get channel locks, you should get two. For most jobs, you're going to need to hold something and also rotate something else at the same time. These are my needle nose pliers. They are compound, and so when you move the handle, the tip moves less than the handle, giving you a lot more torque or force. With less effort, you can hold something stronger, which I really like. Uh, they're one of the few needle nose that I found that do this and that's why I went ahead and got them even though they're DeWalt. I constantly get trouble about them being DeWalt but I really don't care because they're better. This is an 11-in-1 made by Milwaukee. It has hex drivers in it. It's got different sizes of Phillips in common. It also has this ECX bit which is great. Uh, unfortunately, it breaks. The one little part of it snaps off when you try and put some torque onto it. That's happened to me and also to my foreman on his set. So I can't give it a 100% recommendation, but Milwaukee is the only brand that gives you the ECX bit at all. So that's their draw. And I don't think I'm going to ever buy another type of 11 in one until I find one that has also an ECX bit. They're very useful when you need them. This is a torpedo level. It has three neodymium magnets, and those are great. They hold it on to any metal object that you want to use. So when you're leveling pipe or you're leveling a box, it doesn't sway around. You don't actually need to keep your hand on it to hold it still. Wire strippers are great. These wire strippers come with a couple of holes that you can thread screws into, and then when you clamp the wire strippers down, they'll snap the screw off to the length that you want it to be. So if you have screws which are too long and you don't want to have to just thread them in and out constantly, 
you can go ahead and snap them off to the right length, which is really helpful. This one also has a couple of different holes on the blades that allow you to put loops in your solid wire. So that's helpful. I use those all the time. This is my linesman's pliers. The one tool which defines all the rest of your tools. This particular set has a slot where you can grab onto a fish tape, a metal fish tape, and it will not pull out. And the slot is right there at the edge of the handle where it comes into the head. And you should always get the brand that has that because I'm telling you it saves your arms when you have to do a day of pulling. It makes a difference between going home with completely shot, torn arms and just feeling okay. You can see here my previous set of linesmen's. They didn't have the fish tape puller and also their head was a little bit narrower and pointier. They were actually a little bit better brand. They were Nipex, is a German brand. The funny story there is that because they weren't Klein, I got more negative comments about those Nipex than any other tool I've had. Well, except for maybe my DeWalt needle nose. Just because, you know, they weren't very familiar with Nipex. But uh, it's actually a good brand. I probably just got the wrong model. The model of Klein that I got ended up being a lot better, so I'm very happy with the choice in getting it. All of those tools fit into those two pockets. I actually do count them up at the end of the day. I've noticed several times when I've been missing my torpedo level or something else and I've gone back and found it in the ceiling. It's really saved me a lot of time and actually money by just having everything organized. The last thing you're going to get is a tool belt. This tool belt has a spongy support to it that doubles as like a back brace. It's actually a really good tool belt. The one pouch is for material, the other pouch is for tools. I've got the little knife holder on the belt, the clip for putting a tape measure. These two pouches both are electrical pouches, which means that they have loops. They actually have two different kinds of loops. The one red one is just a basic snap for the white tape, but you can see the other one is just a metal loop that comes down and that's actually much easier to use. Other than that I'll have the power tool set which is supplied by my boss. I find that when I carry this tote into a job I hardly ever have to go outside to my truck to get another tool. It pretty much has everything that I need on a day-to-day -day basis. Also notice if I leave any one of these tools out I almost uniformly have to end up going and getting them from wherever they are. So they really are essential. That's all for this bit on tools. I will be making some more videos to help people become more familiar with electrical, especially if you're interested in becoming an apprentice electrician. Videos like this and some other videos I'm going to be making are going to put you a step forward in easing into the job and having the right materials to get started. If you have any questions specifically, please ask me. I'm going to be making more videos along these lines, and I'd like to address them to what you're interested in. Okay, thanks a lot. Again, this is Nick with Alpha Electric.